want to take the floor, but the opacity question about pension rights is, uh, is uh, amazing in a number of countries. I mean, uh, especially when you change, as you say, from one employer to the other, from one country to the other. So one of our priorities also in the uh, internal market that we have is the portability of pensions, but for that also you have to clarify, you know, the rights from the beginning. So that was one sort of uh, uh, thing I had in mind. I did spend, yeah? I did spend a few minutes looking at the ECB rules and yeah. I decided... In all pension, all pension plans, you mean? No, no, no. The, the ECB <laughs> rules about cross-country and mobile oh, yes. workers. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. And I decided, first of all, it would be a couple of years before I would be ready to do anything. And secondly, I couldn't think of anything to say. Uh, but I will say, given where we are, not at the ECB, but in Germany, the Reister pensions couldn't have a worse design. Uh, and I mean, they're just terrible. I've, I've written this in the uh, uh, volume for Hans Werner Zing. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not up to date on it. I wrote that a couple of years ago. I don't think it's gotten much better, but I did learn from somebody here. It's gotten a little better. Yeah, yeah very often. I'm waiting for questions, huh? but um, the many, many regimes, as I know them, I'm not a specialist, but uh, you have sort of hybrid system. We have a deal which is pay as you go. You have one part which is uh, sort of defined benefit and contribution and purely subsidized and then purely private systems. And, and so it's very difficult to, to put the things together. So there's plenty of rules. I had a question about the backstops, for example, to regimes, because sometimes you're in regimes which are not sponsored by the public, uh, where you, uh, you know, your, your uh, provider of a pension is, is, is getting broke. You have seen it in the UK. And so are you in favor of, of in this regime, to have a sort of backstop uh, regime? Or you would prefer the Swedish model is different here, I think, huh? because it's sponsored by, by government, if I understand, no? Or um, if well, something goes wrong, Sweden, if something goes wrong, what, what happens in a the, well, the two parts I talked about mm -hmm. are government design, government yeah. run systems, yeah. and it's the government's problem to deal with it. Okay. That's but I they also have a significant occupational pension system, obviously for civil servants, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which are worldwide tends to be more generous than the system for others, uh, but also for others. Um, I forget the numbers, maybe 90% of the working people have some kind of additional pension through their employers. So those have the, this kind of backstop issue. And the huge swing, uh, most visibly um, in the Netherlands with uh, extended ongoing debate over how hard it is to do anything else, the swing from defined benefit to defined contribution is a way of at least settling very clearly where the risk goes. You may not be happy that it's there, but you're no longer dealing with opacity. Because they discovered in the Netherlands when the, they got hit twice with financial crises that there was a lot of fine print that the workers didn't know about. Um, so, so I, that's I think the case that's... In, 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 I mean, recently, as you, what in market one was calling the big risk-shifting game, where you were shifting, you know, s you know sort of risk to the, to the policyholders and that from defined uh, benefit to defined yeah. contribution. And many but people were not very aware of that. Let me go back on Sweden. Um, they have minimized almost to zero the risk that's outside the system unless they make changes. So what they have done on the annuity thing um, is, is that the standard one is with profit. So the only risk they have is they can't even pay the nominal amounts. Uh, uh, all the rest of the risk has been shifted to the others. And the other one is uh, a repeated calculation of what can be afforded. And in the notional defined contribution system, they do a calculation of assets and liabilities, including the future contributions as assets. And when that gets out of line, they change both the accumulation rate for younger workers and the benefit rate for the already retired. So the government, their design was to have the government budget held harmless mm -hmm. by the various mm -hmm. risks that would come. Now the first time this got invoked, uh, the public was so incensed mm -hmm. that they had to change the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they changed the rules without actually putting in more money, but uh, there is a sensitivity there. I have a one question. One question. Um, 
so uh, thanks first of all for the uh, for the lecture i appreciate it uh, very much um the so uh, you were uh, mentioning sweden repeatedly and uh you know uh, at the beginning when uh, they designed the reform i think it was 1993 1994 probably uh you mentioned it together uh, with a similar reform that was then uh, in Italy based on essentially on the same uh, uh, pension design, a good pension uh, design. Uh, then you stopped uh, talking about Italy and you, you know, went uh, uh, into many details on uh, the Swedish uh, system. Uh, I think it's worth, uh, you know, uh, first of all, it, you know, why did you stop talking about it? Uh, I, I think... Uh, uh, you know the answer to yeah, that, Yeah, I right? know the answer. That's, <laughs> why, that's why I'm asking the question. Uh, you know, uh, the difference is essentially in the implementation of the reform. So the idea, uh, you know, the Italians are good at uh, uh, designing things, much less so at, you know, implementing them. Uh, the implementation was a disaster. Uh, and I think one big difference, which is uh, very much related to some of uh, the features that you are, uh, you know, are in the background when you talk about the quality of a good uh, pension system, is the lack of sophistications of uh, uh, the individuals. And so, when uh, uh, you move uh, uh, from one system to another, you need to train uh, the individuals. And so this was done beautifully in uh, Sweden uh, with this uh, you know, orange uh, uh, envelope. Uh, and it went on uh, for many, many years until uh, people uh, felt completely confident with the new system. So it became sort of ingrained in their brain that automatically they were mapping uh, you know, themselves into the system. That was where uh, you know, the Italian system failed. That is one dimension, clearly. So that brings me to the political economy of the issue. Uh, I mean, one explanation for why the Italians didn't do it is because politicians didn't want to disappoint uh, uh, voters, uh, just you know, revealing what uh, their pension would have been 30 years uh, uh, from now. And uh, I've been writing articles together with many other colleagues uh, until uh, three years ago. And they started sending, sending the, the first uh, orange envelopes exactly three years ago. So, you know, 30 years later, 20, 20 years later. So I, I think, uh, you know, besides uh, the, uh, the good pension uh, design, I think there is an issue of uh, a good pension uh, management uh, of the, the reform that I think is worth uh, mentioning and linking it to the political economy. If you think report. back to my slide on the difficulty of good design, yeah. One of them is what, how the government will behave both at initiation and implementation and then over time in the political process. Mm -hmm. And that, to my mind, is, is a limit on what you do and a reason why uh, there's no such thing as the single best pension system for everywhere. It's got to adjust, obviously, for different concerns about welfare, different degrees of formality, income distribution, but also what, how the government will behave. Just to take an example, uh, the Swedish default is run like a sovereign uh, wealth fund. They're investing all over the world, uh, bringing in a return that has been, so far, uh, very high. Um, the alternative model, if you wouldn't let your government do that is what the federal government, U.S. federal government, set up for civil servants. So this is not a countrywide system, but there are over three million people in the pension system. Uh, and what they've done, and it's a defined contribution system, is they've got, I guess it's now five basic index funds stocks, bonds, foreign stocks, um, federal government bonds, which isn't handled. And they take competitive bidding for the right to handle the index because letting the government make decisions on the allocation of capital is un-American. Uh, so people have five funds. They can choose among them. They could not choose and end up in the default, which is a life cycle pattern. Um, and uh, 
it would be interesting to see, and that's why I was asking the question earlier, how well do sovereign wealth funds do relative to the mutual fund market? Uh, but for the U.S., you wouldn't dream of proposing that the U.S. have a sovereign wealth fund that invested abroad. I think we have a president who would not like to see an investment going abroad. Uh, and I think the public would also not trust the government to be backing the right investments. So, yes, I share your view, yeah, that's and that's exactly why I don't talk about it. It's too hard to stay up to date on it. Things don't change much in Sweden anymore. Let's pick up a few questions. Uh, in the back, yeah? Hi. Um, then quite enjoyed the talk. Um, um, so the, in the EU, the free movement of people is a big deal, but moving across constituencies also means moving across pension funds, yeah, yeah. and that's a big impediment. Um, is there a quick fix, and is there a role for the European Union? There isn't a quick fix. The, it looks easy for defined contribution for, for accumulation. <coughs> uh, and then what you would want to do is track so that people only had one even though they moved between countries. But the trouble is that's only part of the story. If you get to differences in taxation across countries which exist, do you want to let people manipulate how that works out? If you're doing annuities, do you want people to choose to be part of a short-lived population of elderly because they'll get a better annuity? I think it's an in inherently extremely messy problem. Uh, it's a little bit like what we've been seeing with fiscal discussions generally. As long as you're having separate systems, uh, the the rules as far as I went were if it's your national system you can do whatever you want and we're not going to try to mess with it but that has some problems beyond recognition of the mobile workers. The systems here unlike the US are linear so it's not totally crazy if you've got several DB systems you get a piece here you get a piece there although again you could do some gaming perhaps if you can move things around with the wealth moving with them. The DC is easier you can envision putting that together. Um, but then the question is, um, which, what do you want to do about firms? Are you requiring it? Are you not requiring it? Uh, is it does it remain voluntary? Uh, but they're all dealing with the same funds? I mean, one of the complication is uh, on an age basis, people want different funds. That's one of the problems they're dealing with in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. trying to have one fund but mm -hmm. have it function like defined contribution. They call it collective defined contribution or defined ambition. It's what they will pay if the money's there. Um, it's a mess. <laughs> it really is a mess. Philip? Thank you. I, I had two questions, but I'm not sure whether you answered already the first, but let me try again. So um, so having a great theorist in front of me uh, and thinking about the pension design, so I thought that the theorist could give a shot on what's the optimal uh, pension system, given some fairly courageous assumptions, like standard assumptions in terms of, and I'm thinking mainly about the three pillars, the mix of them, or so, or say, the top three to five criteria that make you weigh one pillar more than the other. And I'm not thinking about transition problems, of course. Uh, these are huge in pension. These are ma mainly the ma most important obstacle in many, many circumstances. But say, quote unquote, steady state. So that, that was my first question. So I don't know if you, you said already, well, uh, you know, it's not so easy to say and so on. But maybe the, the theoretical mind can give some conditions in some sense, what an optimal mix would be from a fairly theoretical perspective. That would be interesting. I would find this interesting. The other question is much more practical. So we have in Europe a program that's called the Capital Markets Union. And um, so there are a number of reasons for that, but one being that we learned also across the crisis, but maybe not only across the crisis, that we were too much relying on bank and credit. And we need to diversify in particular in the equity side in order to have a better risk sharing across the continent, simply said. Um, so the question I would have is, um, and of course, uh, um, in my view, one, one aspect that's in the way is that 
the accumulating uh, pension systems are still relatively small, and therefore the demand for capital market products is, is relatively limited. For example, in this country we're sitting here, our pension system has an equity share of 5%. And uh, the Netherlands has a share, I don't remember precisely, maybe 35% of total pension investments. So my question would be, on the one hand, like how, um, how important do you think is the US pension system or the mixture of pension systems for the uh, very important capital markets in the US? So is that, is that a major, like the, one of the top three factors, why they have that capital market system that they have? So some, a continent that does not have such a system would never develop the, those capital markets. And would you have a, a, a view whether um, a pension system should be a means or not to move in the direction of the okay. capital markets? Okay, first, first capital let markets. me repeat that I won't answer the first question. Uh, this is part of, uh, if you will, the marketing of the book. Uh, the, the issue in the book is to focus on the things we can recognize that can be improved as in, in a general widespread way and laying out <coughs> the principles for how to think about it. Uh, and the idea, and this is, you won't be surprised, not the first time I've been asked this question. Uh, the, the idea of providing that would run against the whole theme and focus of the book. Um, the issue of uh, capital markets uh, is, is, is a very interesting one. Uh, the U.S., of course, uh, has, uh, while Social Security has uh, had several trillions, I'm not sure what the exact number is now, it is by law completely in government bonds. So the pension uh, investment in equities is all in the private sector or the civil service sector. Uh, it's not, not the government sector. Um, the, in Chile, one of the arguments that was made in 81 for development was this would be a big boost for the Chilean stock market. It didn't do a whole lot. Uh, it did a lot for uh, values, because there was a, a lot of demand, but it didn't do a whole lot for liquidity because pension funds are very heavily buy and hold. So to what extent is the U.S. stock market helped by that rather than the combination of a long history of serious attempts at regulation uh, combined with a sophisticated set uh, of people engaged in it? Uh, <coughs> I don't think that had much to do with the, with the pension side. Um, I, I'm not aware of anyone trying to uh, uh, answer that question. I shall to Peter this. <laughs> to be, no, I think there was a last question, or not. I think there was no. If not, yes, <laughs> look. So we, we close. We thank you, uh, Peter, very much. I have plenty of questions. One of the questions, but it, it will not give the answer, is the, is the li 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 what do we call it? Liquefying pension rights. You know, the securitization market for pension rights that you have in some place. So I have rights. I can cash it in, spend it now, and then <laughs> you, you are not in favor, I would say. Or are you in favor? Just <laughs> Somewhat, so Somewhat it's with limits, because yeah. yeah, the, 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 okay. there are Very the good. multiple uses yeah, yeah. of yeah. accumulated wealth, and yeah. the question is, how do you shape the choices? Yes, because it was on the non-tradability of human capital, and I thought, well, you, you can cash in, you know, rights on the future that you have now, and uh, I mean... <laughs> oh, we can't cash oh, yeah. them in earlier, it yeah, defeats yeah, the yeah, mandate, yeah, yes. exactly, yeah, and yes. so that's a uh, big thing. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, well, thanks for Peter, and Peter for this. Interesting session. Um, so we've come to the end of this event. I know some of you have planes to catch. I'll keep it very brief. Um, I wanted to thank the research department.